What is going on you guys, Bastion Yo here and today we're coming at you with the Exer Sisters deck analysis breakdown. So basically what I'm going to do is what I was doing about a year ago, I would go ahead and take a look at upcoming decks in the TCG and breaking down whether should you buy them, should you not, how good are they, how may they struggle, pros and cons, we analyze it and then we take a look at overall is the deck worth it. Now. Pre-sale, uh, pre-sale prices are a little ridiculous right now. You know, outrageously priced at thirty dollars for ultra rares, things like that, like five, ten dollars for each and every single rare. But we haven't seen the full ratios just yet. So, if you want to go ahead and pre-order any deck coming out of Grand Creators or any future decks, I'd highly recommend waiting about a week or two, maybe a month after. A month might be a bit too far, but <laughs> maybe a week or two after the set has released. That way you know exactly what the prices are going to be. Now some people of course get very lucky with this and pick up a card that ends up being very expensive for the low. But essentially that just goes into market watch videos. If you want to go watch that, go watch more House of Champs. Anyway, Extra Sisters. <laughs> so first of all, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the pros of this deck. Number one. Essentially, this is going to be an amazing anti-meta strategy. Why do I say that? A lot of decks nowadays, I'm talking about Trap Brigade, I'm talking about uh, Lyralesk as well, I'm talking about Fluandries, I'm talking about uh, Tenyi Sword Soul, you know, every single Shadal. A lot of decks are very, very graveyard reliant, where they're going to be moving cards in and out of the graveyard at will at least two, three, maybe even four or five times depending on the deck that your opponent might be playing. Now the extra sisters, what I think is really, really cool is that they all share the same effect where they get the special summon extra sister XYZ from your extra deck whenever your opponent were to move a card in the graveyard. So if a card leaves a, uh, any graveyard by your opponent, uh, so by your opponent's card effect, even if they were to DD Crow, something like that, called by the grave, you can go ahead and activate these effects to go ahead and uh, special summon one of their XYZ's monsters from the extra deck. Now this gains you a lot of interruption moving forward. Not only does some of the XYZ's monsters prevent you, uh, prevent your opponent I should say from special summoning anything from the graveyard, touching the graveyard, they also have on field negations, uh, things like banishing an opponent's monster your opponent controls. Uh, this one, the boss monster is absolutely ridiculous. So, Extra Sisters Magnifica. I don't know if that's the name's gonna keep in the TCG, but that's the name we have so far now. So, Exo Sisters Mag Magnifica is actually an amazing, amazing card. What it allows you to do, it takes two Exo Sisters XYZ monsters in order to make. So, basically, how you would make a uh, Utopia F0. So, Exo Sisters Magnifica, uh, when it is summoned, you get to go ahead and banish opponent your opponent controls via quick effects, right? And that one's summoned, sorry, once per turn quick effect, you can go ahead and banish a, uh, a card your opponent controls. When your opponent activates a card or effect, quick effect, you can return one Exe's monster, uh, attach this card to the extra deck, and then special summon that monster from the extra deck using this card as a material which is absolutely ridiculous so basically if you make this using a uh i'm gonna butcher that name but this this exo sister monster when the when she is summoned uh you can target one card your opponent controls or in the graveyard and banishes so one card is essentially giving you two banishes of cards your opponent has or in their graveyard as well let's so go ahead and get rid of this is absolutely really really good and then if you were to use a uh, cast patel what she allows you to do when it is summoned, you get uh, by using Exo Sister Monsters and Material, of course. You can activate the effect for the rest of the turn. Neither player can special summon monsters from the graveyard, which would turn off a deck like uh, Shadal, essentially. Um, well, for the most part, essentially. Uh, then, or you could go into Usophil. Now, Usophil, uh, what she allows you to do is you can activate this effect for the rest of this turn. Neither player can activate cards and uh, activate card effects in the graveyard that would definitely destroy a lot of decks moving forward or you could do into Jibreen or Jibberney uh, which is I think a pretty cool archetype as well just gonna ahead and point that out there uh, so essentially what she allows you to do is target a face-up effect monster your opponent controls negate his effects into the end of this turn so 
essentially you have multiple different ways you can go ahead and make the boss monster and it's very easily accessible with just two exo sisters and an extender where the third one is another exo sister or a card like uh, Nefarious Archfiend or a card like Gigabyte or if you look up Yasin's profile he has other cards that can special summon themselves when there's a spellcaster on board. This is the current build I'm currently using. Personally I very much do enjoy the Extra Sister Vadis the Trap card. So essentially what that allows you to do is a special summon one Extra Sister monster and one Extra Sister monster whose name is listed on that monster. So you get special summon two Extra Sister monsters essentially for free. And you're going to do this during your opponent's turn uh, when your opponent were to uh, want uh, send something to the graveyard that may activate. That way when it activates in the graveyard you already have two exo sisters that are going to be activating on your field special summon two of their XC's monsters from your extra deck. So it's actually really really cool how that whole interaction works overall. Uh, next pro that I get to see is that it is a fantastic going first deck. It does struggle a little bit going second, but we'll get to that in just a little bit. So as far as going first, it's actually incredible. Uh, again, you get to go ahead and set up your double negation, uh, not double negation, double interruption. Again, you play so many hand traps that you are going to have follow up as well. Uh, or you could just leave one of your exorcisters on board and just and just pass <laughs> essentially backed up with some trap cards like Solemn Strike with infinite impermanence, things like that. I think that leave an extra sister monster even with the measly 500, 100, 300, these disgusting amount of attack points, <laughs> um, you should be just fine as long as again your opponent activates a card in their graveyard and then they're very likely just go ahead and normal summon and punch over your monster as well but that gets a little bit more into the cons of the deck. Another pro that we have is that it leaves plenty of room for hand traps in this deck. It doesn't really hurt the consistency of it. Uh, you have I played triple Nibiru, triple Ash, triple Valor, triple Imperm, uh, <laughs> triple uh, triple Solemn Strike, all interruption cards. But it doesn't take away from the actual consistency of the deck as I've played it so far, which I think is amazing. You know, worst case scenario, you open up a whole bunch of hand traps and interruption, in which case you can stall out to go ahead and get your Exo Sister or a Nefarious and or a Nefarious, I should say, in your hand. That we can go ahead and start uh, XC summoning and go on from there. So that's going to be the main pros that I see with this deck. Overall, I was very pleasantly surprised when I first saw this deck come out. I really was not sure if it was going to be a deck worth playing. Now it's a deck that I definitely want to potentially pick up in the near future. This is going to be a fun deck. A uh, good anti-meta deck. I don't think it's going to be a meta deck. Again, it's going to be an anti-meta deck. There's a huge difference as to what those would be. For example, if you played during Zodiac format back in the day, Zodiac was tier 1, tier 0, I should say, tier 0 meta. Barrier statue was anti-meta. Uh, there's a reason you barely saw any bar uh, barrier statues top, but then again, they were scattered here or there. Uh, again, it's a little weird that I'm comparing this to Barrier Statue, but I just want you to know the difference between meta and anti-meta as well. So essentially, you are able to go ahead and uh, have negations without also having your opponent necessarily activate cards in the graveyard through cards like uh, Amento, which is a searchable spell card, which is actually really, really cool. So you can go ahead and then target Exo Sister monster you control, especially from your Exo and Exo Sister XYZ. So you don't have to fully rely on it, but the majority of the deck does rely around it, unless you, of course, have this one spell card in your hand or on the field. So that's one thing that I'm not too, too big a fan of. Plus, you can only activate during your turn, I believe. Transfer to your sister. You can only activate this card during your opponent's turn. Uh, yeah. Unless your opponent controls a monster special from the graveyard, from the from the graveyard. <laughs> so that's it for the cons, guys. Uh, pros, guys, let's go ahead and go into the cons of the deck. Cons of the deck. Con number one: it is extremely reliant on your opponent moving cards from the graveyard. Like I said before, I can very easily just go ahead and normal summon a monster and punch whatever is in my way and just chill from there. Or if I special summon a lot from my hand, say I'm playing uh, a deck like uh, I'm not well, uh, like Virtual World, just special summon a lot from the hand, I don't have to use my graveyard as much, although of course it would be very, very nice to go ahead and get the banishing effects, things like that. But I can, it is possible to just go ahead and play with the cards in my hand. It would be very easy to go ahead and beat over every single one of these monsters, pretty much no problem. 
Um, and also there's the fact that it doesn't really set up a negation itself. It does rely on other cards primarily to set up negations, so things like Baguska, um, or set up your F-Zero Draco Future plays, things like that, are just gonna get you the most amount of negation, but then again, you do have the opportunity to play out of hand traps and solemns in there, so you are covered as far as that goes as well. Uh, the biggest issue I have with <laughs> with leaving Exo Sisters on board, things like Elise, uh, Elaine, Stella, Sophia, is that their stats are atrocious <laughs> at 100 attack points pretty much anything can beat over you can summon link karibo and beat over half this deck so that that tells you enough essentially as it is if they have a little more respectable stack line like 1500 1100 attack i could see it maybe but just having um a 100 attack monster or 300 attack monster that you're not always going to be able to summon in defense position just makes it a little bit more lackluster as far as that goes so be aware of that moving forward that your opponent can very easily normal summon and punch over everything unless you of course have the exo sister a mentor that gives you more momentum as you activate a mento a hey, that was that was something there uh, so the next con I gotta say guys is essentially putting up a fifth negate before Nibiru is very difficult um, like I said, the only real negation it is going to have is something like uh, F-Zero or if you're going to have a Solemn Strike, that's cool, but it's not gonna really going to protect you moving forward. Um, you can play Cross-Eyed Designator in here, which some, is a card that I do see potentially being very, very viable in the near future. However, of course, I am still testing with the deck. Um, and the good thing about that, though, is that you don't need to spam your board in order for this deck to be good. So even a lot of the cons that I'm seeing with this deck, guys, is not really something that I can see it hindering the deck too much from a specific playstyle. Like, yes, it, it can't really set up a negation before a fifth summon, but it's not really going to go into a fifth summon very, very often, unless, of course, you have the combo where you can go into Exo Sister Magnifica, in which case you will. But that's the only real time you're going to be going first and summoning more than once or twice, maybe three times. So it's not really too much of a hindrance. The low attack, the low stats aren't too much of a hindrance as well. You are playing a lot of interruption besides that. So you should be, should be okay. And that's really what I had to take from it. I mean, essentially, all the low points I see are countered by the pros and I see this deck being very very good in the near future I see this deck being a sleeper deck in the future I see it being a very very top tier anti-meta deck moving into the next format so we'll see how everything goes moving forward but that's going to be my take on it guys let me know what you guys think of the exo sisters in the comment section down below i know there's a few different uh different builds you can have for the exo sisters uh whether you want to go for more combo based or more reserved like mine is uh, but let me know which way you guys are going to be playing exo sisters in the near future and leave a like if you guys did enjoy subscribe for more videos i am going to be analyzing the next two which is going to be the brave token or adventurer and i am also going to be analyzing the punk p-u-n-k and maybe we'll like take a look at injectors as well um, but we'll see how this goes so let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below and i'll go ahead and see y'all in the next one